Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy, and in this video series, we're going to be looking at work solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam that will be sat by students studying a BTEC Level 3 National in Engineering. Now, the document that we're referring to in particular today are the sample assessment materials for the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam, and this document is issue 2 that is or has previously been available on the Edexcel website. Question 19 states two AC voltage waveforms are represented by V1 equals 100 sine 100 omega t and V2 equals 200 sine 100 omega t minus pi over 6. We're then asked to draw a phasor diagram to represent V1 plus V2, so the addition of the two waveforms, and find the resultant phasor. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to convert pi over 6 into degrees and this is going to make things a lot simpler for ourselves. So the way that we convert from radians to degrees is by multiplying by 360 which is the number of degrees in a circle and dividing by 2 pi which is the number of radians in a circle. So we have pi over 6 times 360 over 2 pi and that gives us 30 degrees. Now the way that I remember this conversion is that if I'm trying to get to degrees then I put the number of degrees in a circle on the top of this fraction and if I'm trying to get from radians then I put the number of radians in a circle on the bottom of this fraction. Therefore if I was converting from degrees to radians then that conversion factor would just be flipped. So we're asked to draw a phasor diagram and we've got a number of choices here. We can do this diagram to scale or we can use trigonometry in order to find the solution of V1 plus V2. So what I'm going to do is a sketch of the phasor and then I'm going to use trigonometry to find the solution. Now when we draw a phasor diagram, what we need to do is make sure that both of those voltages originate from the same point. And if we look at V1 as an example, V1 doesn't have a phase shift or a phase angle. Whereas V2 does, it has a phase shift of minus pi over 6, or we've just said that that's minus 30 degrees. So when we draw V1, we're going to draw it as a horizontal line running from left to right, because it has no phase angle, and it needs to be 100 long. And the reason it needs to be 100 long, or it needs to represent a length of 100, is because the amplitude of V1 is 100. So V1, I've drawn as 100 long. Now V2 is going to be twice that length. It's going to be 200 long. But we can see that it has a phase shift of minus 30 degrees. Therefore, we have to draw that below the line or below the horizontal at an angle of 30 degrees. So this isn't to scale. I'm doing a sketch here. This is V2. That line is 200 or represents 200 and the angle is 30 degrees. Now in order to find our resultant or the addition of those two waveforms what we need to do is we need to turn our diagram into a parallelogram and this is one of the methods that we use for vector addition so I'm going to turn this into a parallelogram like so and the resultant I'll sketch this on in a different colour joins the start to the corner of the parallelogram, like so. That line represents V1 plus V2. If I was drawing this to scale, then I could now find the magnitude of V1 plus V2 by measuring that line, and I could find the new phase angle by measuring this angle here. However, my preference is to do this through trigonometry. And the way that we do this through trigonometry is to find the magnitude and direction of V1 plus V2 there. So what we're looking for is the magnitude and direction. So if I turn this into a right angle triangle, hopefully you can see that the right angle triangle there indicated in red can be used to find V1 plus V2, which will be the hypotenuse of that triangle. And if we calculate the angle, I'll indicate it here as thigh, then we'll also know the phase angle for V1 plus V2. 
I'm going to re-sketch that triangle and I'm going to make some additional notations on there. So this triangle is the red triangle on the initial diagram. I need to find angle phi and I need to find V1 plus V2. Well this triangle, although it may not be immediately apparent, the horizontal component there is going to be the sum of the horizontal component of V1 and V2. And just for now I'm going to label that as X, as the X component. And the shorter side, or the side opposite the angle, would be the sum of the two Y components of V1 plus V2. I'm going to call it Y here. So for my notation, X is the X component of V1, so V1X, plus the X component of V2, V2X. And Y is going to be the Y component of V1 plus the Y component of V2. So how do we find V1X, V2X, V1Y and V2Y? The answer is using trigonometry. Let's look at V1 first of all. V1 travels from left to right. Therefore, hopefully from inspection, you can see that V1 only has an X component. So V1X, the X component of V1, is 100, because that was the length of that line. And V1Y is 0, because V1 doesn't have a Y component. V2 is a little bit different because it has both an X component and a Y component. And I'm going to switch colours again just to make it clear what I'm drawing here. What I'm sketching is V2. And V2 has a length of 200. And if we sketch that as a right angle triangle, then the internal angle is 30 degrees. We need to find V2X, the X component of V2. And we need to find V2Y, the Y component of V2. If we label our triangle, the hypotenuse is always our longest side. The opposite is always opposite our angle. And the adjacent is always the remaining side. And our two formulas for trigonometry, the first states that adjacent is hypotenuse cos theta. And the second states that the opposite is hypotenuse sine theta. So using our diagram there and our two equations, we can see that V2x, the x component of V2, is the adjacent on that triangle. Adjacent is hypotenuse cos theta. Well, our hypotenuse is 200 and theta is 30. Therefore, V2x is 200 cos 30, which equals 173.2. Next, we need to find V2y. And again, referring to that triangle, we can see that V2y is the opposite. And opposite is hypotenuse sine theta. Well, our hypotenuse is 200. Theta is 30, giving us the y component of V2 equal to 100. Now we've already said that the x component of our resultant, or the x component of V1 plus V2, is V1x plus V2x. So x is V1x plus V2x, which is 100 plus 173.2, Two hundred and seventy-three point two, and we've said that y is v one y plus v two y. Well, v one y is zero, and v two y is a hundred. Zero plus a hundred is just a hundred. Now I'm going to return to my triangle. X then, we've just said, is two hundred and seventy-three point two long. Y, we've said, is 100 long. So we have a couple of calculations left to perform. We want to find 
v1 plus v2, and we want to find the angle phi. Well, v1 plus v2 is the hypotenuse of that triangle, and we know the remaining two sides. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem, because v1 plus v2, the hypotenuse, or the longest side, squared, is going to be x squared plus y squared. Or written a different way, v1 plus v2 is going to equal the square root of x squared plus y squared. And if we input some numbers then, the magnitude of v1 plus v2 is going to be the square root of 273.2 squared plus 100 squared, which actually comes out to be 290.9. So we've found the magnitude of v1 plus v2, which will actually be the amplitude of that wave. We still need to find phi, so we're going to use a different trigonometric equation that states that tan phi, or tan of the angle, equals opposite over adjacent, or taking tan to the minus 1 of each side, we'll get theta equals tan to the minus 1 of opposite over adjacent. Well, opposite the angle is our y value, and adjacent to the angle is our x value. Therefore, phi equals tan to the minus 1 of 100 over 273.2. Now, here's the important thing. Before you do this calculation, make sure that your calculator is in degrees, and that will return an answer of theta in degrees. So tan to the minus 1 of 100 over 273.2 is 20.1 degrees. So let's just refer back to our original diagram and then we can state the equation for v1 plus v2. So there we have our original diagram and we've just found that the amplitude of v1 plus v2 is 290.9. We then have sine omega t. That bit remains unchanged. And we've found our angle phi to be 20.1 degrees. Now the important thing is that that angle is below the line, as was our original 30 degrees. Therefore, it's going to be minus 20.1 degrees. And there we have the full equation for V1 plus V2.